Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. <clears throat> In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about um, the way to change kind of how your input function works um, with different input modes that uh, the Encursus library provides. And <clears throat> this is no way, in no way an exhaustive um, tutorial on the different modes. These are just the four that I think are the most uh, helpful functions to know as far as getting changing the input modes. Um, there are more, and if you want, you can go check out the documentation, which I highly recommend. Even if you're just wondering more about these guys here, definitely go check out the documentation. Um, I'll probably have links to it in the description, so it shouldn't be hard to find. But anyways, let's get started. So <clears throat> if you remember from previous times that we've used git, bleh, git char, essentially the behavior it has is that um, when git char is called, it waits for the user to press a key, and then after the user presses a key, um, the input is captured and the program continues. But um, there are different ways that you can change the way this works. Essentially, we've talked about C break before, but um, we didn't really talk about how it affects inputs. So the way that C break works is that normally um, when you type something at the terminal or using git char, essentially, um, things get put into a buffer and then after the buffer is cleared, the information is set to the program. So there is a slight delay um, between when um, the user types something and it actually gets to the program. Now it might be so small that you can't even notice it and the user can't even notice it, but um, it can be good to have that input immediately ready so that way right after the user presses a key you can do something with it, the programmer can do something with it. And that's what C-Break allows us to do. It gets rid of that line buffering and it makes it so that the user's input is immediately available to the program. Um, I'd like to give you an example of uh, this in action, but it's really it's kind of hard to show you what the delay is like versus what the not delay is like because, like I said, it could be fractions of a second that the delay is and, is, and delay is. And unless I have a program that is really, really intensive, it probably won't be obvious to see the delay. So you're just gonna have to take my word for that on C break. Um, but uh, we've used C break before, so hopefully you guys are at least a little familiar with how it works. Uh, the next type of mode we can have is half delay. Now, the way half delay works is it's kind of like C break in the way that it makes the it automatically makes the uh, user's input immediately available to the terminal without putting it to a buffer. Um, but it has a little bit of added extra func functionality, uh, and the way it works is um, whatever you supply it here, which is an integer uh, integer value in tenths of a second, um, it'll wait for that amount of time that amount of tenths per second before um, returning error and continuing on with the program. So say you want the user input to be typed within half of a second, well then you would put in um, five here for the tenths because five is five tenths of a second and it's half a second, so we put five here. And what it'll do is it'll wait <coughs> five seconds and then if the user hasn't inputted anything, it'll return error or negative one, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, the constant E or the constant capital E R R like that also represents um, negative one. So uh, it depends on how you want to think about it. But documentation says it returns error. Um, and to give you an idea of how this works, <coughs> let's see this program and actually run it. Uh, so first we'll make the program and let's run it. As you can see, if I don't type anything every half a second, it prints out negative one. But when I type something it prints that out instead. So um, that's kind of the way half delay works. This is helpful if um, you have a program and you're waiting for user input, but you don't want the user input to block up the rest of the program um, because essentially that's what Gitchar is by itself. It's a, it's a blocking input. It makes it so that the program can't do anything else until you get input back from the user. So what half delay does is it kind of makes it non-blocking non input to a certain extent, you know, because after five milliseconds or five halves of a second, it will, uh, or five tenths of a second, it'll uh, keep going with the program and then you can come back and get user input again. So it can be kind of helpful in a game where things need to move besides just the player or something. Uh, no delay is kind of the exact opposite of half delay. It, um, it, it works like C-break in the sense that it makes it so that the character is immediately available but it also doesn't wait at all. If there isn't any characters at the terminal when Gitchar is run, it returns error and it continues. Uh, it takes two parameters, uh, it takes a window, so I'm just gonna use standard screen, um, and a true false value, um, and if you set it to true, then no delay will be true. If you set it to false, then no delay will be false. So 
it's pretty simple um, now let's run it and you'll see what I mean by it doesn't wait at all because it really doesn't wait at all for input so uh, we run it you can see that we get all negative ones across the board because <coughs> we uh, we did not type anything but we also didn't have the chance to because it didn't wait because there was no delay um, <coughs> so as a uh, as a nice in between, there's no timeout, which or timeout, which is essentially a combination of half delay and no delay. The way it works is you pass it an integer value if it's less than one. So we'll just pass it negative one in this case. It will create um, blocking input, so it'll just kind of treat get char like it would normally act. So let's, let's run that and give you an example. So if you run input. <coughs> you'll see that it just kind of waits for us to type something and we type it and then it waits again and we can type it and so on and so forth. So that's just kind of like normal input. And then if we set it equal to zero, um, it creates non-blocking input, but it acts more, it acts almost like no delay because it waits zero milliseconds before it um, returns error is essentially what it does. So um, in this case, if the value is zero or greater, um, it'll wait that amount of milliseconds before returning error. So essentially, if you pass it zero, it works just like no delay because zero is not delaying at all. Um, so if we run that, you'll see that, again, we get like we did with no delay with negative ones across the board. But if we make this a slightly larger value, so we'll try and mimic our, our uh, half delay from before. So instead of putting five, uh, you have to put 500 because this works in milliseconds instead of um, tenths of a second. So. Um, if we save this and we make it and run it, we should get yeah, the same exact as we did with, did with half delay, where it waits roughly half a second and then uh, prints out anyways. So as you can see, that's kind of how these uh, functions work. These can be very useful, like I said, in games or you know whatever, but they just give you a lot more control over how your guitar function works, and it makes it so you don't have to always wait for input before you continue on with your program, which can be pretty helpful. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope this tutorial was somewhat helpful, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.